Well, I, uh, I'm excited about Monday night and our kids being able to play in front of a packed house. Um, it, it should be a great atmosphere for both teams and, uh, you know, in a, in a meaningful game. And uh, um, obviously we had a, a really tough ball game last night and our kids uh, played exceptionally uh, hard and found a way to win a game that uh, wasn't our best offensively, but defensively certainly was back in the, the mold of, of who we are and, and what we're about. So, um, you know, South Carolina's obviously very, very talented, well coached. Dawn does a tremendous job. That program is, you know, she started that program there a lot like we've started it here, and it's grown to where they are now with 13, 14,000 in their building every night. And, uh, you know, we're, we've grown to where we are, where we've got our seven, eight, nine thousand every night. We're going to have 10,800 on, on Monday night, and it should be just a really just a real special night and a, a great night. Uh, proud of our fans for buying tickets. Uh, I think the student tickets went in eight minutes. And uh, again, just excited about the opportunity again. Great. Got our hands full. Obviously, Asia Wilson. Uh, She's, you know, going to be the first pick in the draft, and uh, that makes her the best player in, in college basketball. And uh, we're just we're going to have to really do a great job defensively on them at every position. I think if you take your eyes off of some of those others, they can they can really hurt you. And so we're going to have to really be on point uh, defensively and uh, offensively. We're going to have to do better than what we've been doing because last night was not good. So much respect for their program. Obviously, they've—you uh, know—it's a team that we haven't beaten in the six years we've been here, and they—they've uh, they've been a team that we've been in competition with for an SEC championship the last couple of years. So we've developed a, a really uh, respectful rivalry, I think you could say, and uh, I know that we have a lot of respect for them and who they are and, and how they play the game. So we'll, we'll, we'll be ready. We, we'll, we'll have uh, some good days of prep, and, and we'll be ready. Questions for players? Blair, uh, how big is this matchup for this basketball team this season? I mean, how, it's South Carolina, you guys see them three times last year, and now it's, uh, it's that time again to see them. How big is this matchup for your basketball team in your senior year? I mean, it is a huge game, but it's, it's a new year. It's a new team for both of us, and so we have to approach the game differently and get ready for players differently. So um, we're just going to put in a few good days of prep and really focus on the things that we need to focus on to get a good win. Victoria, the, the shot that you hit uh, last night, uh, you guys took on it upstairs, but uh, what was the feeling when, when Coach tells you that he's going to put the ball in your hands and uh, get a chance to win, win the game? Say like I said upstairs, I was just praying, you know. Just took my time, got as deep as coach on me. Or he said I can get as deep as I could and just shoot it. So I just shot the ball and it went in. Have a little celebration, me and Blair, but we still have to be back in, you know, need. So just being focused and being prepared for the moment. Uh, Victoria, you know, the last couple of years you've lost, I think, Tennessee, Kentucky, South Carolina a few times. Is there something different about South Carolina in terms of your? incentive to beat them because not only have they beaten you, but they beat you on pretty big stages. Mm -hmm. Does that give you extra incentive? Does it mean more to beat them, you think? And, um, again, it's another SEC game. I feel like we got to be prepared for them just like we prepare for any other team. But uh, beating them, it'll be another game under our record. And uh, hopefully if we beat them, we can finish out the season and be the conference champ. Blair, the, uh, the celebrations that you had, I have to go back and look at it. I think you had a a right-handed uh, hand slap and then a left-handed hand slap after the charge. Had the right one just kind of wore out at that point <laughs> and you just, just get some left-handed action there? I don't even know. I just know I was so glad that I was there and help and that they called it because <coughs> usually if it's like the last 10 seconds of game, you don't really know if the refs are going to call anything, but yeah, I don't really remember <laughs> what I did in that moment. Apparently it was pretty crazy according to Tori. Is it is it just instinctual when when you, because the way that you described it, 
it sounded like an instinct that something just goes off in your head that you know you're supposed to be in a certain position, help position on the floor. Did you just react, or you may, need to, may not even remember, did you just react when, when Frerichs had the ball? Um, I think it's honestly just a habit. We form so many habits of practice and we do so many defensive drills that um, it's one of my jobs to be a good help defender. That's what I do. So um, I just think overall the practices that we've had and habit forming drills, it was just my person, she spread the floor. So I don't need to be hooked up on her. So I usually am not hooked up on my person if they do that. So I just stayed in help and then that was part of the game and I was just there. So. Hey Blair, how, how's your shoulder? It's better. Yeah. I mean, what makes you take charges with that still wrapped up like that? Like, why is that so important that you put yourself in that position to take charge, knowing that your shoulder's wrapped up, you have other ailments? I mean, like our coaches tell us all the time, like you're never going to be 100 percent after the first game of the season. You're never going to be 100 percent until the season's over with. So it's part of my job. That's what I do. I take charges. Um, I do the dirty work. I'm just trying to do the little things to help us win, and someone's got to do it. So, I mean, and I'm in a, a moment in the game, I'm not thinking, oh, I'm not going to dive on the floor and, and help my team get a ball because my shoulder's wrapped up. Like, this is just to um, just give me more security, basically, um, but it's not going to affect how I play. So I'm going to tough it out and do what I do. And um, I would imagine you didn't stay up with your dad to watch the replay of the no. The game. Okay. <laughs> I can't do that. Tori did it, but I don't know. I can't do it. Plus, it was really late. So <laughs> when when they say things, I think it was Debbie Antonelli who said uh, too short, too slow, and then Paul Sunderland says too tough and other other descriptive things. The first part, have you just come to you know brush that off and you could say what you want, but I'm just going to be the kind of player I know I am. Yeah, I mean, I don't really pay too much attention to what people say. I mean, everyone's always going to have an opinion, and that's fine. I mean, it's part of the game. I just have to go out there and do what I know I do. I mean, my team knows what I do um, to help us succeed, and that's really what i got to focus on. I mean, I'm not going to be a 6'4", big combo guard like... I'm this 5'7 guard that does the dirty work, hustles, makes all the energy plays, and that's good enough for me. Well, that, that's kind of what you've been known for, but did you ever picture yourself getting to, you know, 20-point score or four, five, threes a game type player? Did you ever picture yourself fitting in that role? Not well, saying you're not capable, because yeah, yeah, you did no. in high school, but on, on this particular team, did you picture yourself being in that role? You know, I've never really thought about it because we have so many great players on our team that have such big roles. And so um, I've never really thought, hey, i got to go out here and get 20. Like, that's not what I think about. I think about let the game come to me. Um, if if they're on Tory and Tier, like most teams are, and they're doubling them, I'm going to be open. So I have to do my job and make those shots. And so I feel like that's what I did last night. Um, and they just... They put so much emphasis and focus on guarding them. They don't want them to get their points, but at the end of the day, they're still going to get their points. It's just you got to figure out how you want to guard them. But um, yeah, I just feel like I was given some windows last night, and I took them, and they went in. Are you surprised you still have those windows? Because I mean, there's I'm sure there's a scouting report now that you can knock down shots. I mean, you, you had some pretty good looks last night. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't say I'm shocked because at the end of the day, I mean, Tori and Tier aren't going anywhere. So I mean, they're still on the floor. You still got to worry about them. So. It's all on how the team is going to try and guard it all. I mean, it's five on five, but we have some really good one-on-one -on -one players. So, I don't know. Victoria, uh, you know, women's basketball is not really a high-profile sport in a lot of places and a lot of campuses. Uh, that probably was true to some degree when you got here. Uh, can you tell me, like, the last couple of years, how you've seen that change? Just in, in, in class, around campus, in student life, how have you noticed it? Or has it changed that much? You think? Oh, it's changed a lot. You know, my first year we had fans. We had a few fans. It was a couple fans, but <laughs> <laughs> but now it's like it's crazy. Like they travel with us. Like we everywhere we go is like home. Besides Mizzou, for some reason. But everywhere you go is home. We have a lot of fans, and um, it's just amazing how it's grown from like I say a couple thousand to like ten thousand fans, and 
they all be wanting to see us. They all genuinely genu care about us, and they always trying to, you know, just be there for us in the possible way they can. So getting yeah, strong, and in the classroom, more students know who we are, and um, like they know everybody on the team, not just certain players. And um, I feel like every time I walk around campus, somebody speaking or they asking about the other teammates. Blair, about five, six, seven years ago, when you talked about South Carolina and Mississippi State women's basketball playing in a big game, that the thought it's way out there somewhere. What's, how does it feel to be involved in this kind of game and both teams to kind of put their teams on the map, so to speak? I mean, it's really cool. I think great players want to play in big games. That's that's what you work for. Um, and kind of like our coaches were saying, like we get up for teams, certain teams more than others. And I just think when two teams are getting ready for each other to have a top ten matchup, um, I think that just gives everyone so much excitement and just energy to go out there and execute and yeah, I mean like I said, great players want to go against other great players, that's what you work for. Victor, I don't remember what your major is, but if, if it was broadcast journalism and you were broadcasting Blair, how how would you describe her as a player? Uh, she's a tough, physical, aggressive player. That's it. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but no, Blair, she's tough. She does a little aggressive. Like she says, she do the dirty work and she make great shots. When the ball is thrown to her, I say over 50% of the time it's going in. So that's why I'm going to rebound, coach. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But uh, yeah, I feel like she's a great player all around. She do the work she needs to do. She do what she's capable of doing. She don't try to step outside her box and do stuff she can't do. So I feel like she's playing her role. All right, thank you, ladies. Thank you, ladies. All right, questions for Coach? Yeah, I'll, I'll jump out there. Uh, one definition of rivalry is that, is that both teams win some. So you got to get on that side with South Carolina. And I'm wondering, obviously every game is important. The next game is the most important. But beyond that, it is South Carolina. They have beaten in high-profile games. So how do you... Uh, does that create a natural edge for your players? Is that something you worry about? Can you to heat up? Kind of explain that dynamic to me in a way that we, you know, readers can understand. Well, certainly we've had some really good ball games with them. If that doesn't, um, if that isn't part of the definition of a rivalry, then you're right. Uh, it's been one-sided. For the six years I've been here, we've never beat them. But we've had some really good games with them. And, uh, you know, each probably in each one of those games, at the end of the day, they they had the better team. I mean, we lost to them three times last year. I think that proves they had the better team. Um, you know, Dawn's one heck of a coach, and uh, the one thing she's going to do is she's going to expose you where your weaknesses are. And uh, I, I think that's the thing we take away from being in games with her is she really does a great job with their scouting report in knowing us and knowing who can do what and who can't do what and, uh, and making you uncomfortable, not unlike us and how we like to play. So um, it has been one-sided. They've won every game since I've been here. Um, and, uh, but I think for this team, I don't think that that's really a factor. Uh, for whatever reason, this team, you know, we've been saying all year, this team this year, I just think they're different. It's, they've handled it, y'all, for 23 games. So hard to do. Uh, they not only have to handle the bullseye on their back for what somebody else did a year ago, for some of those kids that weren't even here, but they also have to handle the fact that now they're undefeated and they won 23 in a row this year. So they've handled it and taken it on like a champ. And uh, so I think Monday night's the next one. Uh, just like last Sunday was the next one going to, to Mississippi. I just, at the end of the day, we got 16 rivalry games. That's how we look at it. And um, the South Carolina game for us is um, we have a tremendous amount of respect, and we know they are really good. And we understand that, and, and uh, they won't be scared coming in here. We, we know that. They're, they're a heck of a team, but at the same time, I think our team is, you know, we're not thinking about the three we lost a year ago and what it cost us. Um, we're thinking about this year, this team, we got to go win the next one. They're the, they're, them and Georgia are the closest ones to, to us in the conference standings. And so, you know, if 
we're going to do what we're set, we've set out to do. This is an important game for us. Coach Schaefer, do you feel like this, uh, I don't know if you can answer this, maybe you can, do uh, you feel like this matchup building up with South Carolina, do you think it's one of the most anticipated matchups in MSU women's basketball history? I would say so, yeah. When you've got a sellout two weeks in advance and student tickets went in eight minutes, and you can go on StubHub right now and get a $5 general admission ticket for $230. Uh, I think it's a pretty anticipated matchup. And uh, again, just uh, I think it shows the uh, our fan base how educated they are. Uh, they know the game. They know women's basketball. They have a tremendous amount of respect for South Carolina and their program. And um, uh, they know it's an opportunity for us to, to play the team that beat us in the national championship last year. So um, I think there's a lot of people across the country that have been anticipating this matchup, and uh, you know we'll, we'll, we're going to have to play really well. They're awfully good, uh, and very very talented. Can you describe your reaction as as you watch that play unfold? Uh, Blair recognizes uh, where twenty three is, and she sees Ferrick's driving. Is it something like an oh no, oh no, good play, good play? <laughs> Well, you know, from my other end, it's hard for me to see just how close or unclose the play is. When you go back and look at it on, on, on film, there's no question it's a charge. I mean, she's there for two steps. That kid takes two full steps, got a running start, going to drive the basketball. And so um, it's a great play on her part and uh, gutsy, really gutsy. And uh, so, um, you know, I was a long way away from it, Adam. I, I was more worried about a couple other kids getting the ball than that one. And um, and so when it happened, it all kind of happened pretty quick. Does she just instinctively uh, yeah, make she, gutsy plays like that? She's just a, a really instinctive player. I mean, she's been drilled over and over throughout her lifetime uh, of how to do certain things. And in that moment, it doesn't matter whether there's two seconds on the clock or it's the first two minutes of the game. She's going to make the same play. and um, But I think in that moment, she understands two-point lead. They need a two. Somebody's fixing to get it and drive it. Let me see where I'm at to where I can give some help. And so I, I think that's uh, that's that's what she's thinking. She's pretty smart. How proud of you as a father is to see her have a game like she had last night? Well, I can tell you as the coach, I, I absolutely was excited because we wouldn't have won a game without her. Uh, I know her parents were awfully proud of her to know that, you know, you're in you're in a top 15 matchup on the road, pretty hostile environment, uh, struggling. You know, other 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 players are struggling. You got one that's sick, that's gutted it out for 18 minutes, but you got to have somebody step up, make some plays, and to see her step up on that stage. Um, that kid's worked really hard to be in that moment. That didn't just happen and she'd get lucky. She's worked really hard to be in that moment. That's a kid that's been in the gym a bunch, shot thousands and thousands of shots, um, prepared to be in that moment uh, all her life. And to be able to step up on that stage and make an impact like that, it's pretty special. And again, I know because She's been with me all my life. I know the work that's been put in by her. I know what she's she's done. It's not just me as the coach, what I see up here at school. Um, I know the time she spent in the film room. I, I just, there's a lot of, and, and she would be a great, great person to sit down with and talk to. Today's age is all about instant gratification. You got all these players transferring every year, every year. That's a kid that came here, I think her freshman year played in 29 out of 34 games. Sophomore year, I think she played in every game, but still, those two years didn't play, you know, I think, I don't know how many minutes it was, six, eight minutes a game was the average over the course of all those games. Junior year, played in every game. And, and played more double-figure minutes, but still is a starting. And now her senior year, she's on a team that's undefeated. She's a starter, and she is a vital, playing a vital role for that team. She's a great person for all these other people that want the instant gratification, oh, I'm better than this, let me transfer, to talk to and go, you know what? Instead of running from a situation, go put the time in. 
get in the gym, work on your game. Maybe, you know what, maybe the coach isn't wrong. Maybe you need to get better. She would be a great person for those kids that always want to run because, you know, it's easy. Hey, I'm going to go somewhere else. That's the easy way out. The tough thing to do is go get your butt in the gym and work. That's the tough thing to do. And that's what Blair's done. Hey, she, it ain't always been peaches and cream. I've had to talk to her just like I've had to talk to others, but she's accepted her role, whatever it's been every year, and then made it better and not just stayed status quo, whatever the role could be. She's always made that role bigger. And, and now, I mean, we went from the beginning of the year thinking, okay, she's got a chance to be sixth player of the year to where she is now, where she's a starter, averaging double figures, playing the most minutes of anybody on the team. She's our glue person. She's our toughness player. She's our best help defender. And if you don't guard her, she's going to knock down shots. All I got to do is stick her over there on the corner and say, just go stand over there. That opens the floor up for the other four people. And if you don't, if you want to come over here and help on these four, then she's going to stand over there and make shots and play and beat you in horse. And that's what, and last night, she's the only one I had that drove the ball the hole and made a driving layup. I couldn't get anybody else to drive the ball the first half. She made a driving layup the first half. Again, not your quickest, most athletic kid, but a kid that went downhill like you're supposed to. So kind of been warning that uh, last night could happen the offense. I think you probably saw it against Ole Miss and you and Mike come. But you've also said that you want your defense to travel. Did you feel like last night was probably as good as they played this year? Second half for sure, no question about it. Six points in the third quarter, 19 for the second half. That's big time. We're going to win the game without it really locking them down in the second half. And, uh, um, you know, I got – we went with a big lineup in the second half just so we could match up a little better, and uh, that allowed us to do some things. And uh, But I, I was really, really proud of our defense, no question about it. And, uh, again, that's what I'm accustomed to. That's what I, I think we've hung our hat on around here for a while. Coach, you, you mentioned that 10,800 people that will be here Monday night. Uh, I'm wondering how much you, you experience that. You're, you're probably pretty locked in once you get the hardwood out there. So at what point are you aware of the crowd and its effect or even what point do you take it in even? Or, or you do you allow yourself to or are you more aware of it? You know, I, I do notice our arena and how loud it gets. You know, I, it's hard not to. You know, whether we have, you know, 67 or 9 or 10, I love my arena. I love the home. It just, it gets loud in there. And... It is a really, really special atmosphere for, for college basketball. And uh, uh, I do notice it. And, uh, you know, I thought I thought on nights when, I'm, you know, we may have had five or six in there, I thought, man, it got loud in here tonight. Now, when you put 10-5 in there, 10-7, 10-8, it's going to be really special. Uh, again, Susie Merchant at Michigan State said 7,000 sounded like 70,000. Uh, and I think that's the – that's the, the acoustics and that's what we have in our building that make it so special. So, uh, again, our fans are, are great, they're educated, they appreciate good basketball, um, and I think they're hungry for it. You know, I really do. So, I do notice the, I do notice the, the atmosphere. Did you have to give away tickets when you first got here? Do you remember doing that at all? Oh, I remember, you know, we probably left the door open and, and just said, hey, whoever wants to come, come on. Um, and, you know, and, and to be honest with you, just to give you a little insight, that first year, you know, um, my, my thought process with, with the, the, that administration was, look, um, we, if we put a good product on the floor, they'll come. So that first year, I wasn't too concerned with who was in the gym. I was trying to build a product. Um, as the product got better, you know, in that WNIT, we had... I think 34, 3,500 maybe for you know a couple of those games. And shoot, we were ecstatic, fired up, um, and and we thought it got loud for those games. And um, but then as 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 it's evolved and, and you, you're getting this fan base that just absolutely adores your kids. They they just they feel like they're part of them. Um, it's really become special now. There there are no free tickets, not any night. You know we we. Uh, Every, every seat in the house is a 
bought ticket and uh, uh, again I'm I have mixed emotions. I got students that really want to be at this game that can't be there because we sold their seats to other people for more money. And uh, you know that's the business side of it. And uh, you know it's uh, I hate that for those students. You know there's students that have been to all our games that aren't going to get there. But uh, again, uh, uh, it, it, it's it's kind of the, the the animal that we've you know created. And uh, so it's an exciting time. And, you know, like I said at my lunch today, we'll, we'll have first-timers at the game. There'll be people in that arena that have never seen us play. I'd like to hand them a season ticket brochure as they walk in and go, here's your season ticket application for next year. I'll have your money when you leave. <laughs> uh, but, uh, you know, there'll be people that, and that's okay, you know. It's okay. Let them come in and, and get a dose of what we've been doing for a while around here. And uh, they'll be back. You know, they'll be back. Coach, can you talk about the two programs that weren't even on women's basketball radar? Mississippi State, and South Carolina. This matchup, the exposure just getting. What does that mean for just this conference? And well, I just think for women's basketball in general, it's just uh, it's it's a it's a it's been on on the radar of the national media and ESPN for uh, back since back in the summer. Um, and so it's uh, you know for for our game for the women's game for the Southeastern Conference to have two of your teams playing for the national championship that mean that meant so much. You know, Mr. Sankey was going to be a champion that night. We didn't know which team was going to win, but the SEC was going to be the national champion um, that night. But to have those, two, you know, to have two teams in your conference playing for the national championship, to have have teams in our league consistently in the top 25, I think uh, somebody told me in the uh, the second uh, the second viewing that they had come out yesterday that. I mean, did they say it was going to be in the tournament seven, eight, maybe? I mean, it just speaks so highly of our conference, of our coaches, of the players that are in this conference. Um, and, and so it's it's just a, I call it, I'm telling you, it's a nightmare of a league. Um, but it's the it's it's the fishbowl that we choose to live in. It's the bubble that we choose to live in. And uh, but um, you know, it's this game's been on, on. I know on the Mississippi State fans. This game's been on their date for a long time, on their calendar for a long time. No question about it. Uh, uh, and you know what? If there's a women's basketball game that's on somebody's calendar for a long time, then we're doing something right. All right. Thank you, Coach. All right. Thank you. Good